In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own website monitoring system on NAN. Now, this is going to be important if you're running ads to a landing page and a website goes down and you don't know that and then you're just wasting money because sometimes that happens whenever like domain expires and your client doesn't tell you anything. So that's super important. If your website goes down, of course, you're losing business. So you definitely want to set this up. And the great part is you can do it, like I mentioned, with NAN. You can either self-host NAN through a system called Railway. There are also, also other options as well. You can do it with NAN.io, which is the creators of NAN. You can just host it within them. Really easy to set up and you don't got to worry about anything else. But if you're self-hosting, that is an option. It's just that whenever you are dealing with NAN, you do have some limitations when it comes to the workflow execution. So keep that in mind. It's always better to self-host in my opinion. But I will have the download of this in the description in case you guys do want to grab that. If you guys have any issues on this or need any help, um, I highly recommend that you join. It's not really my school community, but it's a school community that I'm a part of. It's called AI Foundations. Um, I joined it a couple months ago. Probably one of the best NAN communities on school. They have live calls every week. They answer all of your questions and here people are always jumping in to help you out and everyone's always really responsive. It is a paid group. I do want to mention that. And if you sign up, I do get a percentage of that. So I just want to be transparent, but uh, no pressure on that. Just wanted to mention in case you guys want to join, highly recommend if you're getting into AI automations, which is really blowing up right now. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, just comment down below. Let me begin here. So open up NAN and go ahead and create a workflow. Whether you're working within your own self-hosting or you're using the NAN uh, website, either or is going to work. So just create a workflow from there and then go ahead and name it whatever you would like. I need my website monitoring. And then from here, we need to add a first step. So I'm going to do a trigger manually just to test everything out. But once we have it ready, we're going to do an on schedule. If we want to run it maybe once a day or every 12 hours. Um, just to consistently check whether a landing page or a website is down, right? So let's go ahead and just start off with the trigger manually for now. And then from here, we wanna add another step and we wanna do a sheet. Oops, let's just type in a sheet here. We're gonna do a Google Sheet and we wanna go ahead and get some rows. I've already connected my Google Sheet here. There's tons of videos that will show you how to connect your Google Sheets to your NAN. Just type in NAN Google Sheets and you'll find uh, a video that will show you how to do that. So I don't really want to go over that there. So from here, we want to do a sheet within a document, get rows. I've already created my sheet. It's called NAN Website Monitoring. And the row I'm going to choose is Websites here. My sheet looks like this. Just create a sheet, call it whatever you would like. I called mine NAN Website Monitoring. For the first column, I have a client name, and for the second column, I have a URL. Then I also have another sheet here. It's just called logs. For the first one, I have clients, second URL, status, and date, just so that we can start to log stuff in, just in case we get any errors. So let's go back into NAN here. Uh, make that connection. Let's just test this out, make sure that we get everything that we need. Let's uh, click into this here. And we can, oops, what's going on here? We didn't get, get anything. And let's see what's going on. Oh, of course we don't have any data in there. No wonder. So let's do a, for the name, I'm just going to do my company, which is Lux Designs. And uh, the URL is just going to be my site here. Let's do Lux designs here and we'll leave it at that. That looks fine. Let's go back to any and let's run a test here. There we go. So it's working perfectly. Perfect. Let's add another one. This is going to be an HTTP request. So let's just type in HTTPS or I think it's just HTTP HTTP request. There we go. To choose that node is right there. Every element that you see that we can choose from, they're just called nodes. So let's go ahead for the method. Let's do get for the URL. Just drag the URL here. That's the beauty of uh, NAN. You can just drag this data. So that's perfect. That's working well. Let's test this out.
There we go. We got a success, which is good. But let's say we have a website that is getting a 404. So I'm just going to put a random, a uh, random text after my URL. So we can test it out. And we're going to be getting, oops. It's not running this. So let's see what's going on here. So if we were to click this, we could probably see right now, we're going to be getting a 404, right? We get this 404. It's not working properly. Let's just trash this and let's retest this workflow. That's probably what I was doing. Let me test this one. I don't know why it wants to go. There we go. Do that. So now let's run the retest and we're going to get an error. So we have an error and it's not continuing, which isn't good. So what we want to do is go into settings and go in on error and we want to continue using error output. So now this is going to run on the error right here. So this is what we're going to use to send us a Slack message to let us know that there's an error uh, with the landing page or the website. So go ahead and let's add another step here and type in uh, Slack. We're going to go ahead and set a message here. I've already connected my Slack on here. If you want to go ahead and learn how to do this, just search on YouTube, NAN Slack connection, and there's plenty of videos that will show you how to do that. Uh, so we just want to do a message, send, uh, we want to send it to a channel. I'm going to send it to one of my channels that I already have. And then we're going to go ahead and write our message here. So I'm going to do it a shin and I'm going to just type in website error. We'll do that exclamation point right there. And the first thing that we want to know about is, is it a client? So we'll put client there. We'll add the client name, just drag and drop it. We'll add the, um, the URL. And of course we want to go ahead and grab the status. We want to know what type of error it is. 404 um, error, which is what we have here. So. You can also put website down, but there's different type of status codes for different type of errors. So you could easily just set up a filter as well and have different messages based on what kind of error it is. You can just ask ChatGPT what a, what a, a 200 error is generally success. So 404 is a page is not found type of error. So, but there are various other ones that you can, you can look at and just create a filter for it. But but just to simplify it, we'll kind of do it this way. So I'm going to test this out. And we can see that it was successful there. That's perfect. I want to add this to a sheet to my log so we can go ahead and uh, track that. So I'm going to do sheet here. I'm going to pick that. We want to go ahead and do a, uh, a pen row and sheet. So Google sheet. She was in document, a pen row, uh, which is this one here and any website monitoring, we're going to do the logs and we just got to fill out these fields that we created right here. So, uh, let's go and grab my client, grab, oops, you know what? That's the wrong one. Was it the right one? Might have been. Uh, do our URL status and we want to go ahead and grab the date the timestamp actually uh the great part is slack gives us a timestamp of when it sent the message so we could potentially grab from here hit message timestamp so put that in there but the problem with that is that it's just going to give us a bunch of numbers let's go ahead and convert that so i just use chat gbt you can just have it give it this uh, short code and then just say that it's uh, it's supposed to convert it to a date, give it what it's outputting, which is just a bunch of numbers, and uh, it will go ahead and create that for you. So uh, I went ahead and did that, and we're pasting it in here. And make sure that's always set under expression. And these brackets here, these two brackets, you always want your JavaScript in between those two brackets there. So let's just test this out really quick. And let's go in here. There we go. So we have it and it's all set.
Now we just want to set this up so it runs every 12 hours. So let's just remove this trigger here. Let's add a brand new trigger. Let's do on a schedule. Let's do hours. And we want to run this every 12 hours, just twice a day. Um, and let's remove this. Oops. And connect this. And let's test this out. Let's see if everything works. Yep, same thing again. And we can see that we still have that error there. So, which is good. That's it for this video. If you did enjoy it and did find it helpful, make sure to like the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.